Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to this session about uh, the adventures of AV in the Leaky Sandbox. Uh, with me is uh, Itzik uh, Kotler, uh, who is the CTO and co-founder of uh, SafeBridge, and yours truly, uh, Amit Klein, and I I'm the VP uh, Security Research for SafeBridge as well. And uh, the uh, reference, uh, topology reference uh, architecture that we are uh, addressing today uh, is a highly secure uh, enterprise that uh, of which we uh, we are looking at two variants. The first variant is uh, where the enterprise uh, endpoints have restricted the internet access. So um, what the, the only access to the internet is limited to uh, hosts and servers and services on the internet that are strictly needed for the proper functioning of the endpoints. Uh, such servers uh, and uh, hosts are, for example, Microsoft update services and servers that are needed for uh, updating the Windows operating system of the endpoint, and uh, antivirus uh, servers or, uh, and, and services that are needed to update the antivirus agent on the endpoint machine and to, for, for the antivirus agent to be able to send data back to the antivirus uh, servers. Uh, other uh, access to the internet, such as browsing to www.google.com, is uh, uh, prohibited and is uh, uh, blocked either at the personal firewall uh, level at the endpoint uh, itself or via a network firewall uh, operated by the enterprise. So the machines have very restricted access to the internet, as you can see. And the second variant is even stricter, where in the uh, endpoints have no direct uh, internet access whatsoever. Instead, they get updated and uh, uh, they can uh, provide, uh, uh, they can upload data uh, to the to uh, some uh, to the le legal and legitimate uh, services through uh, on-premise uh, servers. So, for example, the organization may have on a separate uh, LAN segment a Windows update server uh, and an antivirus uh, management server uh, with which the uh, endpoints can communicate. And those servers, in turn, uh, have internet access uh, to their uh, LAN segment only, and they can connect to their respective uh, uh, internet servers and services and uh, upload, uh, uh, download updates and upload the statics, statistics and data uh, for the services, for, for Windows updates and, and antivirus services. So as you can see, again, the, uh, the main theme here is endpoints that have very little to no internet connection, and yet uh, it's not a complete air-gapped uh, enterprise in the sense that some uh, internet connections are allowed from somewhere in the, uh, in the, en in the uh, corporate network, either from the endpoints themselves to very specific servers or, for, or from on-premise uh, management servers, again, to a limited set of uh, legitimate hosts. And that's the reference uh, environment or setup that we are going to look at throughout this uh, uh, presentation, and that's the reference uh, uh, architecture uh, upon which uh, our research took place. So let's throw into this mix uh, the cloud enhance, enhancement of the antivirus. It's very popular nowadays. Everybody loves what we call the wisdom of the clouds. And it seems that uh, nothing can possibly go wrong with adding this uh, cloud component to the traditional antivirus. So we claim otherwise. Uh, we claim that adding cloud antivirus can actually degrade the security of the endpoint. And that's exactly what we're going to discuss today. So how do we uh, go and how do we uh, go on and do uh, and degrade the security of the endpoint? Uh, again, we assume uh, the highly secure uh, enterprise with a uh, restricted or no internet connection allowed uh, from its endpoints, and we are going to use the cloud antivirus to exfiltrate data from the endpoint, meaning the degradation that uh, we are going to expose today 
is about exfiltration of data. Uh, and the thing to remember is that uh, in our, the technique that we are going to show today uh, ha places no limitation on where the attacker is on the internet. It ha it, the attacker doesn't need to be uh, on the, on the uh, enterprise ISP or on some kind of uh, routing uh, from the enterprise to somewhere on the internet or anything of that sort. The attacker can be any arbitrary internet host anywhere, uh, anywhere in the world. It does not have to be also, of course, in physical proximity uh, to the corporate. And, what we're, and how we are going to do that? Uh, by abusing the cloud uh, antivirus sandbox, as we'll uh, expand on uh, a bit later. So before we go on and uh, describe our technique and explain how uh, we are going to do what, uh, uh, what we are talking about, uh, I would like to uh, discuss uh, some uh, related work and see how we fit in in the world of research around sandboxes and antiviruses and, and exfiltration at large. So first with respect to exfiltration at large, obviously uh, we are not first uh, to uh, explain what exfiltration is and discuss techniques to exfiltrate data. Um, the, there is a lot of uh, uh, research, th there's a large research corpus uh, around exfiltration at large. Uh, we uh, provide here a three, uh, com three, three quite comprehensive compilation of uh, techniques. Uh, the, however, the common theme to a lot or most, the, the uh, high, or large majority of the research is that it assumes that it, an endpoint from which exfiltration needs to take place has no uh, restriction over which hosts to which host the uh, exfiltration uh, uh, is, is taking place. So basically it's a pretty different scenario from what we are uh, trying to address, wherein uh, the endpoint has no internet access whatsoever or the endpoint has a very limited internet access and only to a uh, trusted host, host from Microsoft or uh, the antivirus vendor. So all this research is not directly relevant uh, to the, uh, uh, to the uh, technique that we are going to describe, at least not to the first stage. We'll see how and when we can use this uh, research in the last phase of the exfiltration. Of course, on the other extremity, there's uh, research on uh, exfiltrating data from air gap uh, uh, enterprises. Uh, lots of uh, recent uh, amazing research from a Ben Gurion University a research group led by uh, Professor Yuval Elovici. Uh, so they explored exfiltration uh, by hard drive LEDs and then by uh, hard drive noise and then by uh, thermal uh, uh, vari uh, variations uh, of, uh, of the uh, um, hard drive and, and, and computer systems at large. And lastly, I believe that they published recently uh, a research on using router LEDs as a way of exfiltrating data. However, the common uh, requirement f or, or restriction of, these, of all these methods is that they require the attacker to be in proximity to the attacked organization and Proximity here is uh, meters to hundreds of meters, so it's not really accessible to uh, a lot of the attackers. Um, so, and that's where our uh, technique is uh, superior to, to those uh, 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 amazing uh, uh, techniques and amazing research. A bit more relevant uh, to the technologies that uh, we developed are uh, exfiltration techniques using third-party sites. In this case, the third-party site uh, can, be, uh, can be the update servers from uh, Microsoft or from the antivirus uh, uh, vendors. And so we need to explore or, or, or uh, review whether uh, existing exfiltration techniques using third-party sites are relevant in our case. First is one uh, developed many years ago uh, uh, via uh, 
IP, the IP ID field of the uh, TCP of the uh, IP protocol. Um, it's uh, similar or uses the same phenomenon as the uh, idle scan, if you're familiar with that uh, technique. Uh, but that, uh, and essentially, it relies on the fact that the operating system of the third party site uses a global uh, IP ID counter. Unfortunately, uh, nowadays, modern operating systems have completely abandoned uh, this implementation of the IPID counter uh, in favor of uh, uh, more secure implementations. And so uh, this technique is nowadays, unfortunately, uh, less relevant. Uh, other two related techniques are using our TCP SYN initial sequence number or source port and or using uh, UDP source port or payload uh, in co in combined with spoofed source IP to send a, a, a packet out from the endpoint to the trusted host and have the trusted host bounce it to uh, the attacker's uh, server, which is identified by the spoofed source IP. Uh, however, if since we are looking at uh, high security organizations, we should assume that there is uh, egress uh, filtering implemented at the uh, firewall, and egress filtering would notice the spoofed IP, uh, the spoofed source IP, and would drop the packets. So uh, that's the end of the story for those two uh, methods. Finally, uh, in uh, 2006, Itzik and I presented in Hack in the Box a technique called uh, perfect, what we call perfect exfiltration that uses some caching and uh, browsing uh, uh, properties of, uh, of third party sites or site uh, structure and, and, and caching properties of, of third party sites uh, in order to exfiltrate data. <coughs> Uh, unfortunately, again, in our case, we are looking at update servers and not uh, on we're not, we're lo not looking at uh, sites that are actually browsable and, and maybe not even using HTTP. So uh, again, that uh, prior research is less relevant to the case at hand. We are now, now a few words about uh, and research prior research and antivirus sandboxes. Again, lots and lots of research on, uh, exists on uh, AV uh, sandboxes, uh, and uh, specifically about uh, leaking data from antivirus uh, sandboxes. And it's, the list goes on and on. But the important thing to keep in mind is that uh, those, that research, while uh, very uh, valuable and, and in innovative, uh, manages to leak data about the sandbox itself. Uh, it does not leak data from an endpoint outside the sandbox. So well, it can be a bit confusing, but those, that, that prior research does not cover the technique or what we are going to show you today. It's merely exfiltrating data on the sandbox itself in order to be able to later detect the sandbox and to enable to understand the uh, capabilities of the sandbox or the properties of the sandbox itself. It does not address the issue of exfiltrating data from an endpoint of an organization. Um, there is, however, one case by uh, one uh, discovery by Tavis or Mandy uh, concerning uh, the Komodo local sandbox, uh, a sandbox implemented on the endpoint itself, in which case uh, Tavis uh, was able to exfiltrate data from the endpoint to the internet. However, Tavis, uh, so, so in this case, uh, Tavis did exfiltrate data about the endpoint itself, but it did not concern the problem of exfiltrating the data from an endpoint wherein the, the, the internet connection is restricted or does not even allowed in the first place. So again, a different scenario. So I hope I managed to persuade you that our research is novel and we are addressing a problem that no one else has uh, so far addressed. And before I'm going to uh, describe the exact technique or set of techniques that we use, I'm going to talk about uh, two uh, uh, building blocks that we need. The first building block is 
way, a way to trigger an antivirus, pro, uh, antivirus product. Uh, obviously, we are not uh, inventing anything new here. There are lots of ways to trigger an antivirus product, and in fact, the uh, list, uh, a long list is compiled uh, in one of the um, uh, papers that we mentioned earlier by uh, Ege Balzi. And in fact, while uh, that paper lists quite a lot of uh, techniques to uh, trigger an antivirus product, some of them are quite sophisticated, we settled for very simple two techniques. One is writing the ICAR file to disk. The ICAR file is a 68-bit file, which is a demi uh, malware. It's not really an executable in, in Windows 32 or Windows 64 environment. Um, but it is supposed to be uh, detected as malware by all antivirus uh, products. And the second technique is installing or persisting our quote unquote malware by uh, moving its binary to under the Windows uh, startup folder. As you know, uh, antivirus products typically uh, look for suspicious behavior, and suspicious, suspicious behavior in such case is persisting uh, an executable so that it does not execute just once, but every time the computer boots or the user logs in, which is exactly what we are uh, simulating here. A second technique uh, a second building block, I'm sorry, is exfiltrating, uh, exfiltration of data from an internet-connected machine. Again, uh, this is a solved problem in essence. As we mentioned, there are many uh, ways of doing it. There are even three compilations of various techniques uh, to achieve that that uh, we uh, surveyed in one of the pre previous slides. And again, we are going to use the, the very basic two uh, techniques. One is simply sending HTTP or HTTPS requests to the attacker's host with the, the data to exfiltrate in the uh, post uh, uh, body, uh, body section. And the second one is slightly more sophisticated using a DNS resolution, in which case the attacker, say, have, has a, a domain that uh, the attacker owns. The attacker also sets up an authoritative DNS server responsible for that domain. And now uh, the malware that needs to exfiltrate uh, data uh, forms a DNS query with the a small part, a chunk of the exfiltrated data as a subdomain of, uh, of, of the domain to be resolved, where the, of the host name to be resolved. So we have a subdomain with the exfiltrated data in it, could be a few dozen bytes. Followed by the, and, and this is followed by the attacker's uh, domain. And uh, this query is, uh, this, this host name is then uh, forcefully, uh, uh, or, uh, the, uh, sorry, the malware f forces DNS resolution for this uh, host name by invoking, uh, for example, uh, get host by name or uh, get ADDR info. Uh, and then the operating system con uh, connects to the DNS resolver configured for it, uh, forwards this query to the DNS resolver. The DNS resolver does all the DNS uh, resolution from the, possibly even from the DNS root, until it gets to uh, uh, the DNS, the authoritative DNS of the, uh, of the attacker, and it sends the authoritative DNS of the attacker, the host name to be resolved, and the uh, attacker can respond with any arbitrary IP, but the attacker now gets hold of the chunk of the information, the few dozen bytes that are the, actually the subdomain of this query, and it can log them, and with a sequence of such DNS queries, we can actually uh, exfiltrate arbitrary amount of data. So that's the DNS query exfiltration method. Again, nothing here that, not, we did not invent this method, it's well known. So these are the two building blocks that we'll need later uh, in order to uh, perform exfiltration. And now, for the exfiltration technique itself, again, I remind you, or, or here are the assumptions that we make. The assumptions are we have an antivirus product uh, installed on endpoints, which submits uh, samples to the antivirus cloud. Um, it can be either directly from the endpoint or indirectly via an on-premise uh, server. Uh, and then this, uh, the AV cloud service, uh, 
uses a sandbox to, uh, risk to, 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 un to further analyze the sample and that sandbox has a direct connection or allows direct connections to the internet. And finally, uh, we also assume that the endpoint is of course in uh, already infected. Uh, how an endpoint gets infected is out of scope for this, uh, for this research presentation. Uh, I'm sure I don't need to teach any of you how uh, infections happen. Uh, even in uh, high security organizations, uh, infected uh, USB sticks can be, uh, uh, can, can infect uh, uh, machines. Uh, so obviously um, this is uh, a well-known uh, problem and issue and I think that the uh, uh, concept of uh, assume a machine is infected is de facto standard in the security industry. And so the attack, before I describe the exact steps of the attack, uh, I also want to uh, define two terms. One is what we call a, a rocket. The rocket is the main malware. The malware that is already, uh, that, that the endpoint is already uh, running. Uh, as we said, the endpoint is uh, infected. And the rocket is responsible for collecting the data for the exfiltration and then uh, starting the chain reaction of uh, exfiltration. Uh, the rocket has a vanilla uh, uh, satellite. A satellite is a tiny malware that actually carries out the exfiltration and the rocket has a, what we call a vanilla flavor of the satellite uh, embedded or hardwired inside uh, its, uh, its binary or its, uh, its, its process image, its process memory image. So there's inside the rocket there's a smaller executable called the satellite. And the satellite uh, has logic to trigger uh, the antivirus uh, agent and also to carry out uh, the actual uh, internet exfiltration. So as we said, step zero is uh, having the machine infected, again out of scope for this presentation, uh, but uh, and we assume that uh, we start with step one where the machine is infected by the rocket. As you can see, the rocket uh, contains a small executable, the, this small tiny uh, satellite icon inside it. So we have uh, a small piece of ex uh, another executable inside the larger rocket executable and, and large, the, the large rocket uh, process memory image. Now, uh, the rocket collects the data to be exfiltrated. And as you can see, it embeds the, the data into the satellite image in its uh, memory. And the data is the tiny red dot inside the satellite. That's the representation of the data, the tiny red dot. Uh, so the rocket collects the data and puts it inside a buffer that is a, 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 a static buffer that is allocated in compile time inside the satellite. And let's say we can put like 100K, one megabyte of data inside this satellite. There's like a static buffer there and it's being filled by the rocket. Now the rocket writes the satellite image with the data collected inside this image to disk and executes it in the regular manner and calling system or whatnot. Now there are two malware uh, processes running side by side. The original rocket, the original malware, the main malware, and the satellite, ma the smaller satellite process malware which contains inside it, as we said, the collected data. Now the satellite uh, runs its uh, antivirus triggering logic and the antivirus of course detects it and maybe quarantines it. But it also, because it has a cloud, because it's cloud enhanced, it sends the sample as is to the, to the cloud for further inspection and further analysis. And uh, part of this uh, further analysis and inspection, the antivirus cloud server executes the satellite in a sandbox. And there's the rub. The sandbox is open to the internet, does not uh, prevent all or some protocols or ports or types of connection from the sandbox to the internet and this is exploited by the, sand, by, by the satellite to, ex, to finally exfiltrate the collected data uh, back to the attacker's command and control server 
and thereby achieving full exfiltration and game over. We tested this uh, technique or a set of techniques against uh, 10 out of the 11 uh, top uh, market share uh, uh, vendors in uh, the recent OPSWAT uh, most uh, uh, recent OPSWAT AV market share unfortunately the most up to date one for pure AV players uh, was from 2015 but I don't think that the ma market changed drastically since um, and the results are as following of the 10 products we tested four were found vulnerable to this attack and four are uh, Avira, Iset, Kaspersky and Komodo. As you can see uh, there, there were some variants not, not each and every technique was uh, successfully applied uh, to each and every uh, product but for each product that we found uh, vulnerable there was some combination or there was a combination of, uh, of techniques that managed to exfiltrate data uh, from, the, uh, from that product. Obviously uh, triggering an antivirus agent uh, has some uh, vis visual cues so it's, the attack is not too subtle but it doesn't really matter because the data is already, the data is already, uh, has already left the endpoint. It's already being uh, sent to the uh, antivirus uh, server and executed there so uh, there's no way for the endpoint or for, for the enterprise uh, to uh, prevent this exfiltration from happening. Um, during this research, of course, we interacted with the sandboxes of those four vendors and we uh, collected some insights about the sandboxes themselves. Again, uh, there, there's a lot of research on sandboxes and this is what uh, we found from our experience. First, interestingly, some sandboxes like ESET blocked HTTP but did not block DNS. That's why it's always good to try several methods because some, one of them, some of them may be blocked but others sometimes are successful. Uh, some sandboxes blocked access to the environment variables so when we tried to enumerate them we got an empty list but nevertheless uh, uh, we were able to exfiltrate data from those sandboxes. Some have non-standard software and environment variables um, and we'll give an example in a, in a, in a moment. Uh, in general cloud, cloud antivirus sandboxes are easily detectable that's a bit surprising. Uh, they don't really try to hide themselves too well. Uh, I think in probably all of them, one, at least one of the following uh, properties was, uh, were static. Uh, the computer name, the disk volume serial number, the MAC address, in which case I'm not sure about how static it was but it was easily de uh, um, detectable as, as a virtualization uh, MAC address like MAC address from uh, uh, VMware. And the performance count and frequency again something that can uh, indicate um, um, virtualization. And some sandbox infrastructure is shared among several vendors. We see uh, this, uh, we see uh, 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 when we try the technique on various vendors we get the same sandbox uh, uh, talking to us. Uh, lead time uh, varies from a few seconds to few hours in some cases. Uh, multiple executions, so it would submit a sample or the antivirus agent submits a sample once and you'd expect that sample to run once and then we get uh, several uh, executions of the same, of, of that same sample which is a bit unexpected. And then one of the funniest uh, uh, phenomena f that we bumped into is uh, uh, some antivirus agents would extract the uh, satellite, the vanilla satellite from the image of the, uh, um, of the rocket main malware uh, because they, they inspect it as well and uh, submit that sample uh, to the internet before uh, the rocket actually embedded the collected data into the, uh, into the satellite. And so it get an, execu an unexpected execution of the uh, satellite vanilla version uh, or at the uh, uh, cloud sandbox. Uh, that's because we were uh, lazy enough not to encrypt or compress the image of the uh, vanilla uh, satellite inside the main rocket. Um, we 
uh, we detected or we collected names, uh, 37 names of uh, cloud antivirus uh, sandboxes, and you can see them here. Uh, interestingly enough, in uh, 2015, Hexacorn, which uh, which we mentioned in one of the uh, slide, in one of the earlier slides, compiled a list of over 800 sandbox names, uh, of which only seven out of our 37 uh, uh, were, uh, were in which uh, th only seven out of our 37 names uh, were found in the uh, Hexacorn long list of 2015. So there is some changes in the uh, uh, sandbox uh, uh, environment, uh, but uh, on the other hand, it's still a bit surprising that two years after, we still find seven names that are unchanged uh, and obviously all the world and his kid sister know that they are uh, uh, antivirus sandboxes. And this is just an example of, uh, you, I don't expect you to read that, it's just an, uh, an example of uh, the um, environment variables that we extracted from one uh, uh, sandbox, as it, as it happens, one used, in, used by Komodo. Um, and the interesting part is, this machine did not even attempt to hide its uh, MAC address or disk volume number or domain. They remained static throughout our testing. But um, even if they did mask or, or, or randomize their MAC address, disk volume, and domain, they still they had some uh, non-standard environment variables uh, that, would, that can give away the, that particular box. Uh, there are four sets of, uh, temp of, an, of environment variables, uh, as you can see at the bottom of this slide. Uh, and they all, they are all um, uh, related to each other. So in the uh, left-hand side, in the top left-hand side, you can see a representation of the, the current time uh, in the way that we are uh, in, a, in a human readable fashion, hours, minutes, and seconds. Uh, at the uh, bottom left hand, on the bottom left side, you can see that same representation, but now in seconds since midnight. And then in the upper uh, uh, right side, you can see a representation of the of the current time plus 202 seconds. I'm not sure what this uh, magic number, what's the meaning of this magic number. And again, at the uh, lower. Uh, uh, right side, you can see that representation, that, that time represented as a second since midnight. And obviously, all those uh, numbers and, and environment variables are interrelated and can be uh, used to detect this exact box, even if the MAC address, disk volume number, and domain are randomized. Um, we kept describing the situation where uh, the antivirus uh, sandbox resides uh, in the cloud, but there's also a variant of this attack uh, that, uh, that is applicable to on-premise antivirus sandboxes. It is touted as a more secure alternative to cloud antivirus sandbox because uh, the uh, processing takes place on-premise. Uh, but the same attack technique uh, can, be, can be applied, assuming that uh, the sandbox allowed a certain set of protocols on, and uh, ports, and uh, the uh, organization firewall allows at least some of those uh, uh, protocols and ports uh, to access the internet. And then, of course, in this, in this intersection, the satellite can use, uh, can use one of those ports or protocols to, exfil to actually exfiltrate the data. We did not test this. We did not have an, a, a, an environment or a system uh, that, uh, containing on-premise antivirus sandboxes, but we do suspect that there are some, maybe a lot, of uh, such uh, uh, systems in the wild. To generalize the technique and what we uh, found so far, uh, it, what we can deduce from, from, that, from the research that we did is that any sample sharing 
that takes the sample out of the enterprise on in some cases like on premise cloud antivirus uh, sandbox even inside the enterprise can facilitate exfiltration so uh, particularly the scenario of say sharing a sample with security mailing lists or putting it on some file or sample repositories or or providing the sample to expert analysis services can facilitate uh, exfiltration and particularly if we're looking at uh, online cloud and sandbox scanning services like uh, virus total and friends uh, they can they can definitely be used for for exfiltration uh, either when used as a backend for uh, uh, detection uh, capabil automated detection capabilities or when used manually by just uh, uh, incident response team uploading a suspicious or malicious sample uh, from a, an enterprise endpoint and indeed we were able to uh, demonstrate such exfiltration with Google virus total and Joe security uh, Joe sandbox cloud and payload security hybrid analysis and I should stress though that this is not uh, a vulnerability in those services those services never promised any anything uh, in terms of uh, preventing exfiltration from endpoints they just analyze the samples that we submit to them um, and now it's time for a demo and I hand it over to Itzik. Thank you very much Amit. I'll uh, switch into my um, computer feed. Okay, excellent. So um, before we dive in into the actual technique, let's uh, a little bit understand the environment which the tool works. Um, as, a mid, as we'll go back to mid presentation, we're going to release a tool and a white paper that explains exactly how we did these um, testing. So, first and foremost, we got a server, a um, server in a cloud, and basically we have registered a domain attached to it, and this server is actually acting as the official authoritative name server. So, I'll just um, quickly tail here to see what kind of requests. And just um, quickly do a test to see that we're indeed receiving hits on our, on our DNS. Again, we will use this later on as we do a local simulation of the tool on my computer so you actually see how the information is being leaked out of the sandbox. So um, we have, a, again, a server, and in the server we're going to run multiple different services. Um, as Amit mentioned, it's good to have multiple avenues to try to have the information coming back to us from the sandbox. We have used HTTP, but ever since then we have developed the, the tool to conclude other ports and other ideas, again, all for the purpose of seeing what kind of information can go out of that sandbox. So let's, quick, uh, let's quickly jump into, huh, funny. Let's quickly jump into um, one of those uh, tests that we're going to run, and these tests are going to take place on uh, my computer. So here we have, um, Here we have a, a Windows machine, and in this Windows, Windows machine, we have the, uh, the Rocket toolkit included in it. And basically, I'm going to run this Godot patch file, and what it will end up creating is a text, um, sorry, is a, is a multiple executables. One will be the Rocket, and of course, we then activate the Rocket to spawn the satellite. I'll run it on my computer so we can see the information coming out using the DNS. So obviously we have included the option to define different types of strings for the testing purposes. Um, it's a great way to differentiate between different tests, different iteration, uh, help you differentiate uh, the once the sample has been distributed. So what's happening right now is that we're using a Python script to generate a C file. In that C file we embed in parameters such as the data. And in the plea what we have created is uh, a rocket and that rocket is now contains the satellite that were generated and the string that we actually put in it is that very string that uh, I've specified here. So as you can see we have written 14 bytes that are packed now within the satellite. So what, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that again uh, on my computer locally and the idea is that I will receive the information um, from the other side.
So as you can see, it will now try different types of communication. Uh, as we said, we're exploring different types of avenues. Just one of, one of them is just the DNS. As you can see, the string is came back. It's encoded in base64. So let's quickly try to decode it. And we need to do a padding here. And as you can see, we have received the string back um, from the actual satellite. Now again, that was a local simulation on my, on, on my um, computer, so there is not actually a sandbox involved. Now, for the demo, we have recorded a demo. Uh, and as Amit mentioned, we have tested a number of vendors. We're going to show a demo um, that actually is using virus total to accomplish this. So, um, before running the demo, uh, let's kind of do a little bit of our orientation about what we're seeing. So, there is three types of screens here. On the left upper corner, as you can see that the same server that uh, I've used in the past, and now you can see that I'm opening these multiple different ports to see what kind of information can flow from the sandbox, hopefully to these ports which will be whitelisted. On the uh, left down corner, as you can see, I'm again tailing out the information coming from my DNS server. That will be my avenue to see if the sandbox will allow communication over um, DNS. And now as you can see here, I am again generating using the same toolkit that we're going to release, a rocket and a satellite, and the strings that in this is contains, it's a low bracket 2017. Again, running it, compiling it, generating the files, we end up with an executable. What I'm doing next here is I'm basically I'm accessing virus total, the same webs that you guys are seeing. There's nothing here, nothing different. I don't have anything that um, a usual analyst that goes to this website uh, doesn't have. And again, mimicking the flow of having this uh, sample file which is identified as a malicious, I'd like to further examine it. I'm going to submit it to VirusTotal. As we said, we have found this abuse both in the cloud, directly cloud services such as VirusTotal, but also in the cases for the mid client as presented before for Kaspersky, Ivera, and Komodo, this will happen automatically. So here obviously I'm submitting the sample to get the effect. However, on these endpoint solutions, this will happen automatically, of course, with their um, their sandbox uh, backend and not definitely virus total. Again, uploading the file, as you can see, it will go and start processing it, the very same action that we're seeing uh, when we're actually uh, running it in real time. Now, what you want to watch out for is as these screens on the left side are going to start filling up with the information, that will be the indication that we managed to break out of the sandbox. It will take it like a, like a, a couple of seconds to load up to that part. Again, this was a recorded demo that I did with the real site <coughs> thing, um, as, you, as you can try and reproduce it with the toolkit. And as you can see, and again, the, the order of which virus total sends to the different vendors and the time it will take them to process is obviously varies. We cannot control this attribution. However, as you can see, while the results are being propagated, on the left side, that string, the very same string that we tried to exfiltrate, it comes back through these open sockets. So we have successfully exfiltrated through raw TCP and UDP sockets on these particular ports, the very same string. If you look out on the... Um, on the lower left side, that's the DNS part, we also have received a hit. The string has come back encoded to us. As you can see right now in the demo, I'm going to proceed into um, taking the very encoded string and basically decode it as I did on my local simulation uh, before. And here you have it. So as you can see, we have demonstrated over raw sockets, both TCP and UDP, on a variety of different ports. And again, using DNS, regular DNS communication, however encoded, we have able to successfully exit information from a binary packed with the information 
that has been sent into uh, virus total. Uh, Amit, back to you. Thank you, Itzik. So we've notified the vendors, of course. Um, Avira, Iset, and Komodo fixed the issues with their uh, sandboxes. <clears throat> They simply uh, blocked access from the sandbox to the internet. In fact, Avira uh, did an extremely quick job uh, at it uh, less than half a day. Uh, Kaspersky decided uh, not to fix, uh, as their uh, vendor statement uh, says that there are some alternatives for their corporate uh, customers, uh, but, uh, but essentially they decided not to fix uh, the core issue. And we also got a nice letter from ISET at the right-hand side uh, acknowledging and thanking us for our finding. Uh, with uh, the cloud uh, sandboxes, uh, as, I'm, as I said, uh, it's not really a vulnerability on their side. However, uh, and VirusTotal uh, specifically said that executing, the ex executing samples with, uh, in with internet connection uh, enabled uh, is part of their service. Uh, Joe Security decided to block access to the, uh, uh, to the internet uh, for the samples that they are uh, sandboxing and payload security decided not to comment. Um, as I said, uh, one way of uh, handling this uh, situation uh, from uh, this, the cloud uh, antivirus uh, sandboxes is to block all traffic to the internet from the sandbox. A more uh, uh, delicate uh, approach uh, is to only allow a sample to interact with the internet if we are sure that the sample itself arrived from the internet and was not modified uh, on the endpoint itself. So for example, if we just download an executable from the uh, internet and it's the same executable byte-wise uh, that, uh, that is causing the, that triggers the antivirus, then the antivirus uh, can instruct the sandbox to execute it with uh, full internet uh, accessibility. Uh, however, we should be uh, careful about where this uh, uh, executable arrives from. It's not enough for the executable to arrive from outside the endpoint itself. Uh, if, if, for example, we are talking about an, uh, an enterprise scenario wherein two uh, machines are, uh, uh, two endpoints are infected, and one endpoint uh, generates a, a satellite and then sends it to the second, uh, um, to the second uh, endpoint where, it, where the, the second rocket executes this, uh, uh, this satellite, an antivirus can track the satellite and, and determine that since the satellite arrived from outside the endpoint, it's okay to allow it to access the internet in the sandbox, which, is, which would in, in, uh, uh, result in a successful exfiltration. So we, we learn from this example that the satellite, or sorry, that, the, uh, uh, that only executables that really arrive from outside the enterprise c should be allowed full internet access on the sandbox. And of course, this kind of solution does not apply to cloud scanners and analyzer like VirusTotal that are clueless about the origin of the file. <clears throat> uh, from the offensive perspective, there are some uh, future research directions that uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we list here. One is, of course, to extend the trigger uh, list that is used by the satellite to extend the uh, exfiltration methods, for example, using SMTP, IRC, ICMP. We just tried two uh, very popular protocols, but this by no means uh, uh, is, is an ex exhaustive uh, uh, attempt at uh, exfiltration. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, it would be a good idea to encrypt or to compress the satellite template inside the rocket as, and also to encrypt or compress the data collected and embedded inside uh, this uh, rocket to uh, further reduce the likelihood of uh, the detection by or, or, or detection, detecting uh, AV detection that something fishy is going on. And one interesting direction that we suggest is for uh, the uh, rocket to, to simulate the antivirus agent to cloud protocol uh, so that instead of triggering the antivirus agent, we simulate its submission to the cloud so that uh, we don't need now to, to trigger the antivirus. 
uh, agent as well as we do not need uh, as well as uh, uh, there will be no uh, uh, visual cues on the endpoint itself and maybe we can also avoid uh, detection by the antivirus system at large so to conclude our uh, research here are the uh, takeaway points Antiviruses using internet connected sandboxes can facilitate exfiltration even from a high security enterprises and this can happen when the uh, sandbox is in the cloud and this can also happen when the sandbox is on premise. Uh, in general sharing suspicious or malicious files can facilitate exfiltration unless the file uh, is determined to have arrived from outside the enterprise and is bitewise identical to the copy that resides outside the enterprise. And this uh, specifically applies to online and cloud scanning and analysis services like Virus Total and Friends, uh, but also to any sample sharing at large. And finally, Avira, ISET, and Komodo fix their sandboxes, so they are probably safe. Uh, with Kaspersky, we uh, positively know that they are vulnerable, unless, of course, the users switch off the cloud sample submission feature. And with other vendors, it's a bit uh, hazy because uh, we could not demonstrate positively that they are vulnerable, but then again, we only tried a small fraction of the exfiltration techniques and the triggering techniques, so we might uh, easily have uh, uh, missed um, a vendor or two or maybe more that are vulnerable, but we just didn't use the right uh, uh, triggers or the right exfiltration techniques. We'd like to thank uh, Yoni Friedburg, wherever he is nowadays for his help in setting up the antivirus uh, search lab. Uh, and with that, I open it to question and answers. Thank you very much. Thank you.